Hi, and welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing 10 mistakes that I see people making all the time in their homes, and it just ruins a perfect home. These are easy fixes. They're things that you're going to be shocked how easy they are to fix and what a huge impact it will make on your home. So I hope that sounds like fun. Make sure you hit subscribe, like the video, give it a thumbs up, and let us know down in the comments which one of these is one that you have either found yourself doing or is one of your pet peeves too. Okay, let's jump in. Number one, oh, you know, it's bad enough that we have to see the cords from the lamps. I'm looking forward to the day when those don't even need to be plugged into the wall. But until then, they come with all these warnings on them. And for some reason, people are, I guess we're afraid that they won't remember that, you know, if that it's an, an electrical piece and if you put it in water and somehow plug it into the wall at the same time, bad things are gonna happen, okay? <laughs> My kids used to play this video, Dumb Ways to Die. Maybe some of you have seen that. Yeah, so I feel like most of us know that there's power running through that thing and we need to be careful. So we can cut those tags off. And I just take my scissors and just snip those tags, pull it off. While you're standing there, if there's sticker warnings around the top of the lamp or on the lights, take all that stuff off because a lot of times I'll walk through someone's home and they've been living there for years and all that stuff is hanging out. You can see all of it. And if you can try your best to hide the cord so then you wouldn't even know whether the tag was there or not because cords hanging out are just kind of ugly. So if you can do all those things, you're going to instantaneously give your home a huge lift and it didn't cost you a cent. Number two is cheap soap pumps. I'm amazed, okay? There are so many affordable options out there on the market. I don't understand why you would have soft soap sitting out on your countertop. I will use soft soap at times to refill the pretty containers, the pretty jars. There's so many beautiful ones out there and they're so affordable, even if you don't wanna spend a ton of money. So I love to have a beautiful soap pump sitting by the sink, both in the kitchen and in the bathrooms because I really think that that will completely elevate your space. Marble, shagreen, glass, there's so many different options out there right now for gorgeous soap pumps. These only range from, even if you're splashing out for one that's a little bit more high end, it's $19.95 to $29.95. These are not expensive and they will last you for years and they will instantaneously elevate your kitchen and your bathrooms. I even put the dish soap in a soap pump that's pretty because I think it's that important. And then you can choose to label them or have them in a different one, but either way, even William Sonoma. William Sonoma sells a beautiful set that you can use in the kitchen that has the dish soap and you can also have hand soap with it. I think that these options are gorgeous and they really elevate your space. With number three, I'm kind of hitting below the belt, okay? I'm going here, I'm going here. Number three is ugly blankets. I know, there, I said it. I know, ugly blankets are just a design killer. And I would say anything that looks like, you know, an animal has tried to eat it or it's of the fleece material. I know, I know, I said I'm going below the belt here, but fleece blankets and anything that has that sort of utilitarian look, it's too practical those aren't necessarily pretty blankets. Do we own them? Yes, we do. My youngest loves to sleep with a fleece blanket. I can't seem to tear them out of my daughter's hands, so I know what it's like. We have them in our house too, but I put those away. I don't display them over the sofa. I don't put them in the chair. I don't try to let other people see that they exist. I put them in a basket or in the closet or somewhere like that, but I don't put them out. Instead, I like to put out a beautiful blanket, which I think personally, if I could ever not purchase another fleece blanket again, that's how it's gonna be. But you know, sometimes they get them as gifts. Sorry to the grandparents. Yeah. Anyways, moving right along, there are plenty of other options that are absolutely gorgeous. They are just as cozy. I love 
faux fur blankets. I think that they are absolutely gorgeous and they're so soft and it seems like everybody loves to cuddle with them. Wool blankets, cashmere, these materials give off an instantaneous feeling of luxury and there are plenty of options out there that are very affordable. We've talked about H&M Home many times on this channel, but I will leave you some links for some of my favorites all down in the description box so you can shop some of our favorites. We've shopped on Amazon before, but you can also really invest in something that's really, really gorgeous and will really last you a long time as well. So maybe I'll add a couple luxury options for you as well. But the, these blankets, they're something that you're gonna use or something that you really live with and they will completely transform your space. Messiness is a dead giveaway. It just destroys a perfectly designed space. And I really believe that the key to not being messy is having a place for everything and having a system in which you can put things away. And that way you can train yourself and your family members to put things in their places. As a mom, I know it's not always easy. I'm always telling my kids, that's not where that goes. <laughs> Go pick that up and put it in the basket. You know where that's supposed to be, so go put it in there. I know what it's like, but I really do believe that messiness just destroys a perfectly designed space. It's just sloppy. It's like having a, a perfectly designed suit, but being disheveled and having it all messy. Having your home tidy will not only be amazing and beautiful and transformative to look at, but it will also help you to enjoy your space even more as well. One of my favorite ways to control messiness is to have a basket for things like blankets, things like toys, anything that maybe needs to be corralled. There are so many gorgeous options out there. Everything from wicker to wired, You there's knitted. There's so many beautiful options. There's really just, it's endless and you can really find something that goes with your style home and it will just help you to have an easier way of cleaning up. I also really like to have boxes. I find that those make it so easy to either drop your keys in a certain place. Um, if you need somewhere in your bedroom, if you have long hair and maybe have a rubber band or chapstick in the bathroom, that might be another place that you will have things to store. Having boxes is such a perfect way to store things in plain sight and they come in so many different designs it really can be a lot of fun i think it's a lot of fun to to organize and corral and create these sort of systems it's something that i really enjoy in my own home so i think that it's not a punishment but actually a pleasure to be able to do that so look for boxes that are made of wood you can find them made of marble they um, also have them in glass and brass there's so many great options I think you should have a lot of fun organizing and corralling your messiness. And yeah, I think you'll really reap the rewards off that one for sure. My dad is going to be so upset with me for bringing this up because my parents have a battle in their house over whether the paper towels should be allowed to be on the counter. I personally cannot stand when there are paper towels on the countertop. I think that it is so ugly. <laughs> it's so utilitarian and you can have the most perfectly designed kitchen. I I go into multi-million dollar homes and the paper towels are out on the counter and I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> put them away. Just put them underneath the cabinet. I, I personally like to have really beautiful kitchen towels. I like to have uh, cleaning cloths practically stored in a drawer and I just like to have a nice stack of them so that I don't have to use paper towels very much because even a, a nice towel, um, I've suggested some before from Amazon and I have a favorite kind actually that I like from Target. They're just white, they're simple. Some of them have a little cute stripe on them. They're super affordable, they're very inexpensive, but they're cute. So when that is sitting out, that looks a lot better than just having a big roll of white paper towels out. And you know, it's more environmentally friendly to use you know, a, a cloth whenever you can. So um, I also really like to use the napkins actually that they sell at Pottery Barn. I don't know why, it's just one of my favorite places. I like to buy their napkins and use them as towels in the kitchen because I think they're really pretty, but they're also practical. So yes, just put the paper towels away and I'm sorry, dad, mom's right on that one. <laughs> 
I know this is always controversial because we have talked about the fact that I am, I'm an ironer of sheets. Not only does a wrinkled bed just not feel very inviting and just feels, again, this sort of messy sloppiness that's just not very inspiring to look at, yeah, it just, it just drags the design down completely. So I believe that you should iron your bedding, especially the things that are gonna be showing. I personally love to take them directly from the dryer, give them a give them a really, really good shake before you put them on the bed. Sometimes you can get away with not ironing your duvet covers and your coverlets, but most of the time they still need to be ironed and it will completely revolutionize your sleeping experience and how your bedroom feels. It really will completely elevate your space. One of my other pet peeves is when I see that somebody has taken something right out of the packaging. I see it all the time in real estate photos. I even see it in magazines and I'm like, what? No, you can't take it right out of the package, stick it down on the bed with the with the creases still in it from the packaging. It just, what? No. It, it's one of those finishing touches that is so important. And I really like to put essential oils, just a teeny little drop of essential oils in my iron. It helps all the bedding smell really good. I also like to have a linen spray that I just spritz onto my linens. And I just like to keep them really fresh and I try to launder them pretty often because I think that a well-made bed that smells really good and just feels so crisp, oh, there's, it's the ultimate luxury to me. I, I can't crawl into bed at night in a messy bed. It's just like, I, this is just not how I want to end a day. So I think it's really important and I think it, you will love it if you haven't tried it. So you guys let me know down in the comments if you are also guilty of ironing your bedding and if you love it too. <laughs> Next up, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh. I'm, these are some of the things that I just see all the time and I know it seems like I'm being nitpicky and maybe I kind of am, but I think these are things that we just forget about. And you just get years down the road and you're like, yeah, so um, I didn't realize that was supposed to be like that or I could have taken that off. So what I'm talking about is the stickers on the light switches. So when you have maybe an outlet put in and they put the cover over it, there's usually a little sticker on it for it being GFCI protected. Well, any electrician knows that that's a GFCI outlet. So you do not have to have the sticker left on it in order for them to know that. And you know that, and I think that the sticker is really ugly. So if you feel like you need to keep it because you're worried that maybe it would come up later on if you want to sell your house, you could always have a little piece of paper that you stick them to and put it in your home binder where you keep all of your documents for your house. But the stickers on the light switches are just ugly and it's just unattractive. It's somewhere that you're gonna be looking at every single day and I think that those little details are really important and they really do make a difference and they just stick out and it's just awkward, especially if you have a dark one with a light sticker on it. It's just really ugly. So um, I think a lot of times people don't realize that you, you can take the sticker off. You, you are allowed to take the sticker off. I, I feel like it's like the, you know, the bedding that comes with like the warning that says basically you're going to go to jail if you take the tag off. <laughs> And it's like, no, you, you can take all that stuff off. Take all the tags off, the stickers. Yeah. While we're talking about stickers, let's just go on to the next one. Let's talk about stickers on fruit. <laughs> I know, you guys, I'm telling you. I shouldn't tell you all of my pet peeves, should I? I really should keep some of these to myself. But I cannot stand the stickers on fruit. I will buy an entire bag that doesn't have stickers of pears and plums and some of the ones that have sensitive skin. I will purposely buy maybe a bag of them just so I won't have to have the stickers on them because I hate those stickers. First of all, they ruin half of your fruit, whether it's an apple, a pear, a peach, the plums, they're all too sensitive to have a sticker on them. So that has nothing to do with decor though. When you have your fruit sitting out, I think that a bowl full of apples or pears or avocados, any kind of fruit sitting out is so beautiful. It's especially if you display it in a beautiful brass bowl or maybe a marble one or something that's really beautiful. Um, 
when you have that full of apples and there's stickers all over them, just why, why, why would somebody do that? So I get that somewhere in the line of the plucking to the getting it to the store that they need to make sure that they can identify what piece of fruit it is. I understand that, but I hate it. So anytime you get fruit, take the stickers off. I know you're all gonna be thinking about this next time you go to the store. <laughs> I can already hear you guys. Next time I see you guys, you're gonna be like, Valentina, hi. Um, I saw your last video and here's here's my apples without the stickers. <laughs> or here's my apples with the stickers and I promise I'll take them off when I get home. <laughs> it's just ugly. It really detracts from the overall aesthetic of your space and it really is infinitely prettier to just not have the stickers on them. So just pull them off, <laughs> pull the Band-Aid off or the sticker and just, yeah make them nice and pretty. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, oh man, I feel like this one's another one that's slightly below the belt. I hate it when things are stored out on the counter. So it's really normal that you have things that you use every single day, like face wash, you've got your shaving gel, if you like to wear makeup, you might have some makeup and you don't, know, I, I just don't think that those things are very pretty to display on your countertop. Certain things can be pretty. I like to corral certain things like the cotton swabs and the, um, you know, if you use the cotton rounds or something, those can be really pretty if you store them in glass canisters or they've got them in metal, they've got them in marble. There are so many beautiful options for what you can store those practical things in on the countertop. But as far as like practical things that aren't necessarily pretty, that stuff really needs to be put away. So if you don't, if you have everything sitting out on your countertop and it's just a sea of products, then that probably means that whatever is in the drawers is not getting used. <laughs> Either that or you are a product queen and uh, maybe you just need a bigger space somewhere else to store some of the things that you don't use every single day. For me, I like to have the drawers in the bathroom. I have the top drawer, which is full of stuff that I literally use every single morning and night. So it's my face wash, it's my toothpaste, it's my moisturizers. I have a set of makeup items. Those are the things that I just really reach for every single day. And then I have a separate area where I have a little bit more of long-term storage. My second drawer down has things like nail polish and nail polish remover, things that I don't use maybe as often. Uh, and then I have a separate area where I store things in boxes so it's really pretty and it's things that I don't have to have every single day but I know exactly where they are when I need to get to them. I think that's a better way, personally I think it's a better way of living your life because I feel like it can just, you can have the most beautiful bathroom in the entire world and if it's covered, the countertops are covered in stuff, you're just not going to enjoy it the same way as you will when it's styled. And I, I find that when we go to stage homes because that's what we do. We work in real estate and design. So when we go to stage a home and we take everything off the countertops and we have our clients go through their drawers and just get it down to what is what they're really, really using, they always respond and say, I should be doing this all the time. I'm never going to go back. It just makes that big of a difference. This is a great time, again, to treat yourself to some beautiful baskets and containers that will fit either inside your drawers or maybe if you have a linen closet or a shelf where you're going to be storing things. This is the perfect excuse to shop all the beautiful things that are out there. Beautiful baskets. I think wire baskets are also really pretty. I love a lidded box. I think that's gorgeous. And I think that you can just have things stored in there that you don't use absolutely every single day because I don't see how you could possibly have that many things that you use every single day. So just have like your long-term storage. If you're doing your hair up a certain way and you've got bobby pins that day or whatever it is, have those things somewhere else. And that way they're, they're organized, your drawers are tidy and you're able to put things away and it will transform not only the design of the space, but also your life. Our final one for today is ugly towels. I don't know why, but so often we just stop 
seeing what we're using. We, we buy a set of towels maybe when we first move in, maybe when we first get married or move in with somebody and we have the set and we, we just use them. And then one day it's like we, we just stop seeing them. And a lot of times they get really tattered. A lot of times your hand towels, your bath towels, and your kitchen towels are one of the things that you should just be replacing. When you're trying to create a luxurious look in your home and you want to create something that looks really beautiful and well-designed and well-styled, I think that it's one of those great times to have an excuse to splurge on new towels. It's not that you have to throw the old ones out. A lot of times ours just go to become cleaning cloths or maybe to the garage if there's a spill in the garage or whatever. You don't have to throw them out, but you can definitely retire them and get new towels. There's so many gorgeous options. I absolutely love to have some with a little bit of a pattern. I also like to have some solids. I like to have at least two or three sets of towels per bathroom. And also for the kitchen, I like to keep quite a few because I like to wash them pretty frequently and you know, it's just sanitary to wash them. So I think having a couple sets makes it to where they, none of them gets worn out quite so fast. But there's something very luxurious as well about having something that's beautiful that you get to live with every day and also looks beautiful when your towel is hung up on the hook and it's really pretty to look at it really will change the way that you see your entire space so think through whether you want to get some egyptian cotton if you want to have something that has a pattern in it and what's going to really suit your style but i really love to shop at places I really love to shop again at H&M Home. I've got a few favorites that I've shared before that are in our Amazon favorites. We have a little storefront there where we share a lot of our favorites, things that we've tried and that we really like. I'll leave a link for that as well down below for you. But you can also splurge a little bit more and go for something a little bit more high end, something that will really be special because these are the things that are touching your skin, the things that you're they're putting you're putting on your face and you're you're wiping your hands with them. These are all things that are in contact with you. So I feel like they're really important and it's not just vanity to just say, oh, well, they're tattered, just get rid of them. I, I think that it really is an important piece. And um, I think that I love to launder mine with a beautiful detergent. I love the Myers lines. I love their detergents. I think that they're all natural and they come where they're missing all the yucky stuff and they smell so good. And when you have a fresh, clean towel, that's really beautiful. It will transform your space and the way you feel when you use it. <laughs> so thank you so much for stopping by. I'm very curious to hear what of these you are guilty of and maybe if you have some of your own pet peeves that you see others doing, we'd love to hear about those too. Maybe we're making some of them and we'll be like, oh, we totally do that. <laughs> I'm sure we do plenty of them. We are definitely not perfect. We're just like everybody else. So we make them too. So I think it's just a fun thing, very lighthearted conversation to talk about. And um, I hope it will be helpful as well though. It'll help you just to feel inspired to really be a homemaker. I think that that word has gotten to be so, it has a lot of negative connotations put with it, but ultimately we're all homemakers, aren't we? We're, even if you aren't a full-time homemaker, we're all making a home. And I think that that's really special. And those little details as you create that home are really important. And they're things that I don't want to lose sight of. I'm, even when I'm busy, I think it's really important to care for the little details in our home. And that's what we talked about before. That's the sign of someone who's elegant and classy and sophisticated sophisticated and the home that goes with them. And so I just think it's a lot of fun and I hope you do too. So thank you again for stopping by. I hope that you'll hit subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.